Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and it is Triple Play Day and I am here with Misty and with Natalie and today we have three awesome projects for you all based on the orange peel template. So let's get started. So I guess, Misty, you're first this All time. All right. Yeah, this is my little quilt behind me. I, I called it, it Main Squeeze, and it's just a little, you know, kind of baby quilt. 41 by 50 it's is what really it measures. Cute. Thank you. I love I, it a lot. I really like it. And to make this quilt, you're going to need one uh, fat quarter bundle. I use this Essex Springtime Collection, and I just love all the fun colors in there. You're also going to need one and a half yards of your background fabric, two and three quarter yards of your backing, and a half yard of your binding. You'll also want to grab some iron-on interfacing, just some lightweight. You'll need your small orange peel template, a squaring tool, and I use invisible thread for my Smart. top stitching. <laughs> Never have to change that Exactly. Thread. So let's get this out of the way and I'll show you how we made it. All right, so to get started, let's go ahead and open up our fat quarter bundle. It's almost painful. To I open know. A fat it's, They're it's so pretty. It is a little bit painful. And this is a pretty one. It's really fun. And so what I decided to do is I used five of what I called the cool colors and five of the warm colors yeah. to kind of create this gradient. So I just went through and picked the ones that I wanted, and I'll just kind of order them from light to dark. Oh, like the, are so. these for the backgrounds These now? are for the backgrounds, the, the half square triangles of okay. the block. Mm -hmm. And then let's pick some for the other. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's really, it's really fun. And then I think I used this guy. There we go. And so you can see we've just got five and five. So you have a few extra left over that you can use, but the math, this is, this is what worked out to make this quilt. So oh, we'll okay. just save these for another project. And I'm going to grab this guy right here. And now if you want to press these for me, okay, that would be super helpful. And then we're going to cut so open them up all the way or well, that one you can kind of leave folded because um, we're going to cut the orange peels out of the all of our warm colors turn into orange. Peels. Oh, OK, OK. So um, one of the things I love about the Fat Quarter Bundle, and we don't think about it this way very often, is that it is the original It is, yeah. You know, we're the, we sell a lot of pre-cuts here, and the Fat Quarter Bundle is the original pre-cut. And it gives you so much leeway, because especially if you're thinking in your mind, well, but, you know, what about a layer cake or what about something? I mean, you get layer cakes out of this. Absolutely. You get strips out of this. You know, whatever you need, you get from a Fat Quarter Bundle. And so it's always a good uh, It's a, a good great buy. option. And one of the things I love about it, too, is you get a lot of versatility. So maybe in a pattern you need a 10 inch square and a five inch square, you can right. totally get all of those out of a fat quarter bundle. Yeah, I don't, right. I don't tend to use them as much, but they're so useful. They really are. So I just folded mine like this and we are going to cut in thirds. It's in, in, um, oh, in half, in half mm -hmm. and in half again, but I'm just watching to make sure my selvage is out of the way. Yeah. And so then I just kind of Fold it like so and set my template on here. And what you need is you need 16 total. And so I don't need to trace it. I'm just going to cut. Oh, look at her. Yep. Pen back. And so we'll tr we'll just trim that. And I love this new rotary cutter with its ball bearing. Oh, it's so nice. And so we'll just cut. And so I'm getting four at a time this way. And so, like I said, you're going to need 16 for the quilt, so you'll just keep continuing across. And for all of your um, your print orange peels, you're also going to need one of your interfacing. So you'll just want to cut a bunch of those as well okay. for the quilt. And so then that is how you would do all of the warm fat quarters. And then from the cool, we can cut this into 8-inch squares. So we're going to need four 8-inch squares to make our half square triangles. So eight inch strips. So we'll cut one and then we'll come back and cut another. Make sure this is laying smoothly. She's on the edge. There we go. <laughs> we can set that aside and then we will turn these and cut it into eight inch squares. So I like to trim up both sides just to make sure it's nice and neat. Yeah. So we'll start on this one and we'll slide down and trim this up. There, there we go. go. 
Now we have our four eight inch squares. With each of these, you're gonna pair them with a background square. And we are just going to put those together and sew all the way around with a quarter inch seam. I knew sewing Perfect. was coming. I got in my spot. You were ready. I was ready. <laughs> Hang on, let me line this up a little bit. No worries. You don't want to... <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't want to line. I know, it just has a mind of its own. That's right. All right, here we go. All the way around, quarter of an inch. Yep. I feel like the whole world is staring at me oh, right now. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> I mean, we are. We are a little bit, but it's okay. I mean, even you if I'm not. You can handle the pressure. You've got it. Even if, I, even, even if I'm not perfect, we're going to square this, square. right? Exactly. It's going to be great. Good. That's exactly right. All righty, there we go. Okay, so once we have that sewn on all four sides, we're going to cut this corner to corner in both directions. So I am just going to I do lay love this, this method here. of making half square triangles. It does make it pretty quick. That is for sure. There we go. And I like to use the block lock. So Nat, if you want to press one of these open, I have some squared, but we'll go ahead and All square right. one. Well, I'll keep busy over here. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. So then I am looking for five inches. And so you can see there's just a little bit that you're going to trim off to square this up. So we'll cut. Ooh. Do you like to square on both sides? I do. Okay. I like it to be really, Perfect. really square. And then we'll just slide this down. My fabric is wanting to slide more than the ruler today, but that's all right. Then make sure that that's lined up on the five inch mark and square up this side. There we go. And I have the rest of those done. So we are just gonna put those together so that our prints match up in the middle and we'll sew it together like a four patch. And I did go ahead and sew these blocks together before I add my orange peels. So if you want to sew those. Okay. Perfect. Squared and ready. Squared and ready. Yeah. <laughs> so it is like a big square and a square then? Exactly. just gonna open those open up. Open it up and sew it together. Perfect. And we can match this side right here. This little seam can lay together. And then match up the middle when you get there. Yep, match up my middle. Your seams are on, your outside seams are on the bias, so don't pull them. Yeah. Just let the machine do its job. All right, and now if you want to press that, then we can start prepping all of our orange peels. And so we are going to put this with the bumpy side of our interfacing down. And then we are going to sew a quarter inch all the way around, and then we will slit it and turn it. Okay, this is like um, not interfacing, but it's like a woven. It's, just, a, it's like what I would use on a t-shirt quilt. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's just the it's one I have. It's a lightweight stabilizer. Yeah, you can use So any of those probably any would, work. would work. Yes. Yep. That's just what was on my table. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm worrying about if this um, piece is rumpling, but it's not really going to matter. It, it, it shouldn't matter. And I'm real particular so I go back and I trim off these little ends a bit and then they turn really nicely. Yeah. Nice. So we'll just snip a little bit of the bulk off of those ends of our orange peel. Whoops, oh. didn't quite get to the end there. And then we just pinch this and cut a little slit. And then we can turn this right sides out. Oop, I maybe didn't get that quite big enough but I think it'll still work. I'm pretty sure. We'll yeah. make it fit through there. So we just well, and if wanna... you use the the little bamboo tool, yeah, this that, right here. I like to use that to poke out the point. Yeah, and the, it and makes just those run it edges the... because you can't press it until you're ready to put it on your block. So that's right. This helps a lot. Yeah. There we go. Just like that. The tips and tricks. And it gives you a nice crisp seam on those edges. Chopsticks work too. Yep. Whatever you want to just <laughs> run it around. And then that's what we're looking for, like that. And I just kind of roll it and make it lay 
the way nice that I want to. Flat. And for each block, you're going to need four of those. And so we are just going to put those on here to make an X now. Just like that. And then Nat, if you want to... How close do you get them in the center? I just kind of float Move them in the block. Bit, make sure we can... So they don't like touch don't, in the middle. They don't touch, nope. Okay. I just float them in there and I just want them to run, you know, corner to corner. And you make sure that this isn't, there's still a quarter of an inch. Exactly, because so you here. don't want to cut that off when you put your blocks together. And okay. so then now, Nat, if you just want to press those in place. All right, you got it lined up how you want it? I think so. You can double okay. check. I trust you. Well, I'm just going to press it straight <laughs> down. Press, I press don't it want in them, place right perfect. now. I don't want them to slide once they. Yep, that's perfect. I love that look, how they just... I was really happy with how it yeah. came together. It's so adorable, and I love that. And, and you could do just iron-on if you wanted to just mm -hmm. fuse these in place. You absolutely could, but I liked the texture. It gives it a little bit more yeah, loft. it makes them stand up off the block yeah, a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And so then once you have those pressed down, you can do whatever type of top stitch you wanted. I did a tiny little blanket stitch with invisible thread, and so you can't even see it. And the beauty of that is you don't have to change your thread color right? Nice. with all of these different so, orange Now, when you use invisible thread, do you just use your regular bobbin? Mm -hmm. White bobbin thread, okay. and then this is in the top. Okay. And, so, and let me just say that for my generation, the invisible thread, you know, it was there was a little bit of danger involved yes. because it, was it more wasn't like fishing great. Yes, yes, I know. I was and afraid of it for a long it. time. All of you who are my age, don't be afraid of invisible thread because it's good now. I, you know? I agree. I actually well, had this, a, the, the same experience. I was terrified of it, and Courtney actually convinced me. She's like, I promise there's good stuff yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> and so so okay, I, I was okay. excited to see, and it turned out just beautiful. And so let me show you how this fits into the block. This one goes right down here. And we just, I just set them straight across. And I, I did the whole thing so it kind of gradated, what's that word, gradient uh -huh. down from top yes. to bottom. And so it's four across by five down. And so it's light to dark in your orange peels and in your half So triangles. out of all of your, so beautiful. your worms, yeah. you cut, you cut um, all the orange four peels. squares. I mean, I'm sorry, not your warms. I'm saying that wrong. I'm looking at the backgrounds right yeah, now. Yeah, all the backgrounds. So you these cut your, your are eight all into squares. the eight inch squares, mm -hmm. each different color. Yep. Um, that you have in there and, and then, then all of your other colors that you selected for the, the orange petals. peel are the petals it's and then beautiful. there's just a little three inch outer border that I just set it off from mm -hmm. the edge mm -hmm. and then I used um, I think it's abstract skyline I was gonna say what is that thing. quilting pattern I, I don't recognize it I haven't it. used it for a long time but I thought it would be fun and what about the it. back so it's just another one of the pretty Essex linens oh, that's oh very beautiful. nice yep. that came out beautifully yep. so. but it's so soft and, and yeah. such a nice what size does it end up 41 by 50 41 by 50, yeah. which means you can actually use um, regular yardage to back it. That's true. Yep. Which I always yeah. love when that happens. Mine tend to be like 44. And exactly. then you're like, oh, it's we got like a little more. miracle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a little miracle. All right, that's awesome. Well, I love great. it. That's All right. beautiful. Thank you, well, guys. Well, I think I'm up next, so we'll see you soon. Perfect. All right. Okay, so it's my turn, and I went super simple with this. Sometimes, you know, you, we never know really what pre-cut we're getting, and I got a charm pack. So I decided it's so it's adorable. to make use one charm pack and see what I could do. So this is my little quilt back here. And I love that it was black and white because it enabled me to use this bright color on here. And uh -huh. let it's me show you really how to do it fine. because it's super easy. So to make my quilt, you're going to need one charm pack. And we have used Black Tie by Danny Mogstad. It's this little, little one right here. And it's just beautiful. It's black and white. And then we're going to need uh, some accent fabric. You're going to need three quarters of a yard. And I used the color of the year, Crush. Awesome. It's called Crush by Robert Kaufman. You're going to need a border. And I went with a nice big six inch border just because it's so tiny, you know, gives it more yeah. oomph. Yeah. You know, oh, and I also used the accent fabric on that first inner border as well. I love that. I think that made it really pop. Mm -hmm. And then our backing is two and three quarter yards. Our binding is a half yard. I mean, it's not a big quilt, but it's sure a fun one. So you're also going to need some uh, fusible. I did the iron on. Uh, I did the easy, <laughs> the easy right. way to attach yeah. the orange yeah. peel. I did the iron on, a fusible, and you'll need about two yards of that. You're going to need the regular and the mini of the orange peel template. So let me show you how I did this. So I have a lot of this almost done and it's so simple that I just, uh, you know, I almost feel like I cheated on this one, but it's so dang cute. So anyway, 
I actually, you're gonna need some heat and bond. You're gonna iron it to your fabric. And you can tell that I have been actively using this. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just wanna show you how I do this. Um, th this uh, type of heat and bond irons on very quickly and very easily. And I'm a little bit old school. So I did not rotary cut around mine. Oh. I traced mine on here with a pencil and then I scissor cut them. And I'm gonna trace a big one as well. I guess I could rotary cut. I might live right on the edge right now. And, You've got and rotary this. Cut. You can do you it. You know, when you're sitting at your desk, it doesn't really occur to you to do this because I just go for what I would normally I do. I put it on the fabric side though. You might have a little better grip. Oh, interesting. I never thought about that because I'm always drawing it. No, yeah. but, okay, I guess I can do that. It feels risky, Natalie. <laughs> feels risky. This, it's, this feels it's, way you, out of my... <laughs> you got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, slowly, Jenny, slowly. This rotary cutter is so smooth and it works so fast that, you know, because it can cut through layers and layers because yep. it has that ball bearing in it and I, uh, not much drag on it. No. All right, let's see if I got it. Okay, so that is good right there. Looks great. So you need one of these or you need however many of these you're going to make. And you're going to need a bunch of these as well. So I, um, I just literally started, this is how I did it. I started by laying them out in black and white. And so I wanted to have, you know, the contrast and luckily there's enough blacks and enough whites that, um, it's pretty even. And so I tried not to get my same prints close by each other. And so I just laid them out and then I decided where I wanted my flowers to be. And so I take, took my big template like this. And originally I was just going to use the big template and make poppies. You know, I just thought that would be really fun. I folded it in half and I just literally cut it in half with my scissors like this. And then I decided that I wanted to make flowers. Oops. Can you iron that a little Absolutely. bit more right that? Get that to stick a little better. This one is good. And, um, and I just started putting them on and I laid them in about a quarter of an inch like this. And I put my flower to the middle like this. And so let's go ahead and cut another petal. Oh my, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to trace again. <laughs> I mean, cut rotary cut again. Literally, it's easier for me to scissor cut. It's so funny it takes, how we it just takes have longer. A well, you can do it either way. It, it yeah, takes longer. It doesn't even matter. But you get used to doing it, you know. One way or the other. Yeah, but I want to. I want to appear forward and <laughs> modern, like you girls. You oh, know. You're fine. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move into the next century and and use a rotary cutter. Oh. All right. All right, so iron this a little more. I can already see that that's not adhered very well. There we go. Okay, so again, I'm just gonna cut this in half like this. And we'll peel these. And I put them on here like this to make flowers. Now I set them in so they were at least a quarter of an inch. I wanted them to catch kind of in the seam, but not, um, not add too much bulk. So I put them on like this and I made, I made my flowers. So I actually laid out my whole quilt. So when you use a charm pack, it's 42 squares. So it's six across by seven down. So I laid it out and I started putting on the flowers and I added all these big flowers. And then I was like, oh, what happens if I do little ones in the corners? And so that was really fun addition for me. So I just did the same thing. I took a regular small orange peel like this and cut it in half and then started adding them in the corners. So then they would add, oh, this guy didn't stick at all. Let me see if I got a sticky one here. All right, so then I added this one on this corner like this. And so as I have two flowers, let me add another set over here. Girls are awful quiet today. <laughs> <laughs> We're just watching. So as I started putting them together, this secondary, some of my blocks would have two half flowers ironed on them, mm -hmm. and some of them would just have one. And because it's six by seven, it doesn't end up even. So I ended up with my little petals on the bottom right here, 
you know, yeah. there being like an extra little set of little petals on right. the bottom. And, uh, and if I'd had, you know, more charm packs, I would have probably done it uh, another row up on the top. But let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and iron a couple of these on. So, I mean, it's just so simple. And then I honestly just sewed around them. These I sewed, let me see. They could just um, be in like little I did patches. a tiny blanket stitch. And because my fabric was all the same color, I did not use the invisible thread. I could actually match my thread color because I knew I wasn't gonna change it. Yes. So it's a tiny little applique stitch, mm -hmm. um, and or you could use a little zigzag as well. And so um, once I got them all laid out like this, I just literally started putting them together in four patches and made my quilt. And so it goes together really simply and really easily. And it uses, I love that it uses one charm pack and just a little bit of accent fabric. What is the size on this, Misty? It measures 40 by 44. 40 by 44. So with the nice six inch border and the one and a half inch border right here, it just gives it, you know, a little bit more. On the back, I use the floral That's and so really pretty. Pretty isn't yardage. it pretty? And, um, and the quilting pattern on this is the Baptist fan. And so I love it. It has kind of a modern feel to it. And it's just really, uh, I think it came out really pretty. Really pretty. So I guess it's your turn, Nat. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So this is my quilt. I and love it. It's so beautiful. I love how it turned out. I think it's great. I'm calling it String of Pearls. Perfect. Because the little orange peels just create yeah. this cute little border around the half square triangles. It's much easier to make than you think. I was going to say it does look like you worked really hard. Yeah, yeah. well, it's All right. pretty easy. All right, so to make this quilt, you're going to need a package of 10 inch print squares. And I use the K Facet Collective, the August 2023 edition, Cool Colors. Um, you're going to need a package of 10 inch print squares. And I've got the this beautiful black Kona fabric. You'll need a little bit of accent fabric, about two yards, and that's what you make all your little orange peels with. And my backing, I used a beautiful 108, so two and three quarter yards. Mm -hmm. You can see here, it's really so pretty. pretty. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And Cape's backing have a sheen it's to nice. them. So and yeah, yeah, it's nice and just soft a nice and hand lovely. Now, them. if you don't have 108, you can use five and a quarter yards of regular yardage. Because why not? So yeah, yeah and your, your binding, works. I just used black for my binding and it's about three fourths of a yard. You also need the mini orange peel template. It's a I was handy, just looking handy to see tool to have. Um, you'll need some so light fusible adhesive. It looks like about three packages. It's just kind of a bunch, I don't know. Yeah. If you have a roll, just cut them and until you run out. <laughs> and I do until love it. Until you have what you need. Yeah. I, I do love that the rolls fit in these boxes. Yeah. Yes, it's so convenient. And then convenient. I use the block lock for mm -hmm. trimming, for squaring. for squaring. But if we you like the clearly right perfect, that will work as well. It's, it would be trimmer A. So mm -hmm. cool. All right. That's what you need. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just make some half square triangles. And I did mine the same way you did. We're just gonna pair our two layer cake squares together. Okay. And sew all the way around the outside edge. Perfect. No trimming this time. Well, we'll trim after. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I had this beautiful layer cake to work with and I wanted that pretty angle. I thought it would be really fun. Well, it is so interesting that it's a half square triangle quilt, basically. It is. You know, just fun to, yep. fun to realize. Yeah. Well, and we had a moment of panic when we realized we both did half square triangles. But yeah. They're yes, so we different. had to check because she's like, I put my orange peel on a half square triangle. And I was like, what? Me too. <laughs> what does yours look like? Not the same. Nope. No. That's the beauty of triple play. That's actually one of the things people ask us most uh -huh. often. It's like, do you know ahead? Do you, do you plan yeah, it out? Yeah, not always. Well, Our like, lives can be rarely. super busy yeah. and sometimes we don't see each other. Yep. All right. So we're going to cut this in two-fourths diagonally both directions I'm just gonna turn that because I don't want to I don't want to cut crosswise today no. it's all right better to be safe all right so if you will press those open oh you be will great. be you will be impressed with my pressing okay cool Oh, maybe not. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not so far, but we'll get so there. Far. We'll get there. All right, I'm going to start squaring. I squared my uh, half square triangles to six and a half. Perfect. 
And there's plenty of room to do that. Did you have any trouble uh, getting six and a half out of all of them? No. Okay, excellent. Nope, it worked for every single one. Didn't have to, you know, over stretch or make it too tiny of a seam or anything. It just works. It, it's such a great way to make half square triangles. It's quick and easy. Yeah. And this block lock is exactly the right size, which is super so great. Convenient. Yeah, when you actually, when you're trimming and your square is the right size, that helps so much. Just makes life so easy. Yep. yep. All right. And more. I would be using the Clearly Perfect slotted trimmer, which is which just is a also different great. squaring tool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's great. It's also great. Whatever works for your brain. Yep. I will go into the corner if I can get it straight, but these just aren't working out that way this time so sometimes they get a little wonky yeah but that's the nice part of squaring right yeah yes. exactly all right so now that we are at this point I'm going to go ahead and um, we're going to make the the fabric for the orange peels so you've got to put that adhesive on your um, accent fabric so we have so we a, just have a, like a little piece to work yeah, with a piece of accent fabric and I have this uh, heat and bond mm-hmm and it's the sticky bumps are down to the fabric and yeah. I'm just going to lay this on up. here and iron on this piece and I'm ironing from the paper side right and then we can let that cool just a little <laughs> <laughs> okay and I just cut mine out using the um the, the rotary, rotary cutter. cutter. I can layer probably, I, I feel most comfortable with two layers mm -hmm, thick. Mm -hmm. um, other After that, it gets a little bit too slippery. Yeah. They slide around and I feel like I'm Do not getting- Do you want to fold it? Not getting, folded is harder because it like, it just doesn't- It shift. It erased. doesn't, yeah, it yeah. shifts. Okay. Yeah. So I like to layer them, but I will do two layers at a time just to go a little bit faster. Alrighty. And then I usually just give it a little flip and get the other side. I don't cut the points off because it's just not necessary. It's pointless. It's pointless. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to overlap these anyways. So I'll cut another one just to show that. Well, how many do you need for a, a square? No, oh, I mean just, just for one. Just three. <laughs> for <the whole> quilt. <laughs> three for each um, little half square triangle. And I did these uh, before I put the squares together. Okay. So the way I did it, well, I three started with. It's much more manageable than hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> it's three per half square triangle. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. So there's 42 blocks times four times three. <laughs> That's how many. <laughs> right. Okay. We're not going to tell so, you the answer to that. <laughs> so I just lined these now. up. I put my two little orange peels on the edges, and you can just peel those off and line them up. And I, I keep my points on that center seam to keep everything nice and straight. Come on, little guy. And then I overlap these just a little bit. Usually it's just about a quarter of an inch on each end. Perfect. And if you don't like the way that end looks, you can just trade places and put them in the seam. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, because sometimes I'll roll it from the end and it'll get a little... Yeah. Yeah. And then we just press that nice and flat. All right. <laughs> just like that. You got like it. That. You got it. Yeah, if when you're heat and bonding, you tend to you move your iron back and forth, things could slide. So it is always best to just... You know, press. Truly press. Yep. And mm -hmm. then that's that's it. This is the basis of the whole quilt. So I put them back together with their partners and made these little blocks like that after these guys are on and they're top stitched before they're yeah, sewn it's together. Always easier to top stitch it's before you. That's block. right. Before you have the big block or, mm -hmm. you know, definitely don't iron them onto the entire quilt top. No, no because <laughs> Not when you're plan. trying to put that whole quilt under your machine, it's just too bulky. So do your top stitching before your half square triangle is pieced into this block. And then you're just going to put them together in a six by seven layout. 
So, so pretty. So yeah, I love how the teal stitching shows up on the black fabric. I just think it looks really cool. It's really cool. So the quilt ends up being 72 by 84. And no border. No border. I just thought it looked pretty the way it was, yeah. but if you want to add a border, that's totally fine. The fabric is beautiful. It's gorgeous now. And that's it. It's just that simple. It's half square triangles with some little orange peels overlapped. Perfect. So Very I cool. hope you enjoyed this. It's and, fun. And this one, I do want to point out on this one, mm -hmm. you did, we did do a tiny little zigzag. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. so there's, and, and it is, again, it's all one color. So you can just put mm -hmm. your little matching teal thread on there and go and for it. The whole time. If you want mm -hmm. your invisible thread, that's fine as well. But yeah, it was, yeah. it's really simple. Perfect. And they, and you do, just so you know, don't be worried. You do lose your points here. They do turn into this little thing that, you know, makes like a little crisscross and and so you're not trying to save any of those points they just get caught up in the seam and i think it looks well great. and i love how they're caught up in the, in the, the binding as, as well or the yeah. binding as well yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it just it off. Mm -hmm. rounds it off yeah no i think it looks yeah. really great so it's i awesome. like the effect i think it looks great and i hope you guys do too so three great new projects for you this time so you guys, if you have the orange peel template and you know how to make one thing, it's a good template. But when we give you all these different ideas, it becomes a valuable tool. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the orange peel template from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out. See you next Friday.